Please be advised that this video is for the sole purpose of entertainment. Any views of purely my own are subjective and may not necessarily be true. I do, however, do extensive research for all of my videos. All photos have been found on the public domain. I am using them under the Fair Use and Fair Dealing guidelines. I urge everybody to do their own research. Well, hello, it's Murky Meg here. It's Saturday the 2nd of May and today's video I'm going to be delving in to what happened yesterday when the judge threw out quite a lot of claims against the Mail on Sunday from Meghan Markle. Now, if you don't know what's going on, where have you been? Meghan is suing the Mail on Sunday for printing a letter to her father. She says that this has infringed on her privacy rights and also it infringes on her copyright rights. It's a bit of a tricky one because she wrote the letter, so therefore she holds the copyright. By Thomas then going to the Mail on Sunday, it is claimed that they breached her privacy, copyright and data protection. Now, the Mail on Sunday, which is under the umbrella of Associated Newspapers, they dispute this claim and argued parts of the case to be thrown out. And that's exactly what happened. It was Mr Justice Warby that was presiding. And yesterday, he did, in fact, struck out significant parts of Megan's case ahead of the trial. This is seen as a big blow from Megan's side because she's put this evidence up to try and support her claim that the journalists had acted dishonestly and had caused the rift between her and her estranged father, Thomas, by digging up dirt to portray Megan in a negative light. In summary, there were Three aspects of Meghan's case. Uh, it alleged that one, the defendant, which was the male on Sunday, acted dishonestly and in bad faith, that they deliberately dug up or stirred up conflict between Meghan and her father, and that they distressed Meghan and had an obvious agenda of publishing intrusive or offensive stories about her intended to portray her in a false and damaging light. Justice Warby has struck all of those particulars of the claim and further information about it from the case. Anything that referenced those are now struck out. Now, I have scoured through both the summary and the whole approved judgment, and this is what I think personally. I'm going to try and dumb it down a little bit because, to be perfectly honest, it, a lot went way over my head. It's heavy in legal jargon, which you would expect because it is a legal document. I'm going to brief you on what I think are the most important parts. There's something that I need to iron out before we go forward. There are two issues that I can see that's going to be a spanner in their works. The first is the People magazine. And I've said this every time the court case is mentioned in one of my videos or it's all over Twitter. This wasn't the first time in the Mail on Sunday that the letter or its existence was put in a publication. We all know about the People magazine. Five friends of Meghan's who referred to this particular letter in trying to make Meghan look better in the public's eyes. It's alleged that only one of those interview was given in person and four of the interviews were given via email. How can you actually know that you are speaking to the real person via email? Sure, you can do it on a video call, but in an email, anybody could set up an email account, can't they? I'm just leaving that one there for food for thought. The second issue I have is their claim, or Megan's claim, was that she never intended this letter to be put out into the public. It was a deeply private letter from a daughter to her father. This is disputed by the fact that Omid Scooby has gone on record, and this is word for word what he has said. He said the letter was very much to repair the relationship with her father. She knew in her heart of hearts that this was going to be released to the papers. Thomas has a record of this. This is exactly the man that she knows. So many of those things that were in that letter were written with the public in mind. She very much wanted to set the record straight. So the elements of the court case that are now going ahead are the misuse of private information, 
breach of duty under the general data protection regulations and infringement of copyright. She also orders for the cessation of processing the erasure of the personal data and the communication to third parties of such cessation and erasure. She basically wants all of the articles removed from the internet. There are five articles that were brought up with regards to these invasion of privacy copyright claims. The first one was revealed the letter showing true tragedy of Megan's rift with father she says has broken her heart into a million pieces. Then the second one, Megan, stop painful attacks on Harry. Her dad, I like him. I'll always love you. Third one, revealed the handwritten letter showing true dad tragedy of Megan's rift with a father she says has broken her heart into a million pieces. Fourth one, Meghan Markle urged her father to stop painful attacks on patient, kind and understanding Prince Harry in five-page letter, but anguished dad says, I like him, I'll always love you. Fifth one, secrets of Meghan's letter revealed, note to her father, saying her heart has been broken into a million pieces, reveals that she's a narcissistic showman whose self-control is wavering. Now, the claimant says that in August 2018, the claimant wrote a private confidential letter to her father, Thomas Markle, which detailed her intimate thoughts and feelings about her father's health and her relationship with him at the time. The claimant sent the letter to her father on or around the 27th of August 2018. It's claimed because she is the letter writer. She holds the copyright. In essence, the claim can be shortly stated to the letter is an original literary work of which the claimant was the author. She is the owner of the copyright in the letter by reproducing words and images from the letter, issuing copies to the public and communicating copies of the substantial parts via its print and online publication. The defendant, which is the mail on Sunday, infringed that copyright. The information in the letter was private and confidential and contained the claimant's personal data. The disclosure of such information in the articles represented a misuse of the claimant's private information and processing of the claimant's personal data, which was unlawful and unfair. But can you remember what Omid Scooby said? He said while she was writing that letter, she she had it in her mind that the public were going to see this anyway. And the fact that her friends were also going to be made aware of this letter just contradicts this whole case entirely. I've gone through this summary and the detailed documentation and you can counter argue everything and I'm not an even, even a lawyer. The defence, which is the mail on Sunday, countered this argument by stating that Meghan is a major public figure whose fitness to perform royal duties and to receive public money is a proper matter for public scrutiny and whose past and present conduct is right of enormous public interest. The Mail on Sunday denies that Meghan had a reasonable expectation that the letter would remain private. I suspect that the evidence that will be brought to court, should it go to court, and I will get onto this a little bit later, that they will bring in the evidence of the People magazine and also probably Omid Scooby's words as well. With regards to the letter being original literary work, the Mail on Sunday admit Megan wrote the letter but disputes that a letter is an original literary work. The original literary work is limited to her and that her her rights are outweighed by the other rights and interest engaged, which basically means the media and the public interest outweigh her copyrights. Now, in this documentation, there's a lot of backing and forthing going on with evidence and correspondence and jargon being brought up to counteract claims and dispute them. Very interesting one though that I picked out is the starting point of the defence is that as a general principle, a recipient of the letter is not obligated to keep its existence or contents private unless there are special circumstances such as a mutual understanding between sender and the recipient that the contents of the letter should be kept private. I.e. when you receive something that 
that's marked private and confidential. You get a letter from your hospital. It's marked private and confidential. You know that there is an agreement between the sender and the recipient that nobody else should read that letter, much like your bank statements. Nobody else should interact with that letter because it is marked private and confidential. The fact that this letter wasn't marked private and confidential blows that whole case outright. This is the clincher in their defence. There was no agreement between Megan and Thomas that this remains a private letter. There was no special circumstances, nor was there any such mutual understanding that Megan knew it was possible or even likely that her father would disclose the contents of the letter. That is in the documents. It also goes on to state, including for publication in the media, all the more so because such disclosure and publications were lawful in the United States. Yes, that's right, dear listeners. This law does not exist in America. She can take her father to court here for this very reason because it's unlawful in this country to breach copyright over a letter, but not in America. But Thomas Markle is an American. He wasn't to know that. However, there is the implication that the mail on Sunday should have known that. However, they say that public interest outweighs all of this. The Mail on Sunday also go on to appeal that the letter does not appear to contain Megan's deepest and most private thoughts, but to be an admonishment by Megan of her father for failing to behave as she would have wished. So basically, she was ticking him off. She was telling him off in a letter. That's not somebody's most private and deep, darkest thoughts, is it? It's a scolding, let's face it. That letter was an absolute scolding from Megan to her her father. And this is the crutch of the case, is that the publication of the letters content was wrongful and constituted an unjustified infringement of Megan's right to privacy and the misuse of her private information. And they give these as issues of support, supportive content. It says that Mail on Sunday's actions were a very serious infringement on Megan's right to respect for her privacy and family life. They claim that it was a gross intrusion and invasion of privacy. They also claim is that she is well known to the public and details of her feelings about her relationship with her father are not a matter of legitimate public interest, nor do they relate to her public profile or work. They say because the Mail on Sunday used the world exclusive title in the article, it was used in the most sensational and inflammatory terms possible and given huge prominence, including on the front page of the Mail on Sunday and the home page of the Mail Online. This bit has really tickled me. It was a kind of a huh moment. The claimant has not courted publicity in relation to the details of her relationship with her father. Hmm, big fat lie there, isn't it, Megan? The claimant says that the letter was disclosed with the sole and entirely gratuitous purpose of satisfying the curiosity of the newspaper's readership regarding the private life of Megan and curiosity deliberately generated by the Mail on Sunday. They claim that there was simply no public interest or legitimate reason to publish the letter and that Megan will refer to that fact that the Mail on Sunday chose to deliberately omit or suppress parts of the letter in a highly misleading and dishonest manner, including even cutting out words in the middle of sentences or whole sentences out of a paragraph. Now, the Mail have retorted with the fact that they stated on these articles that it wasn't a full letter and that it was, in fact, sections of letters. They claim that these issues have caused considerable distress, damage, humiliation and embarrassment to Megan, that it was flagrantly unlawful and constituted a gross invasion of Megan's privacy and that she was shocked and deeply upset by the publication of the detailed contents of her private letter to her father and that it was intended to portray her in a false and damaging light. Evidence was also submitted that this is not the first time that they claim that the Mail on Sunday or Associated Newspapers have done this. They've used these articles as examples. 
and the claimant solicitors outlined her distress and concern about these articles and how the defendant has treated Megan's complaint in a dismissive manner, even refusing to accept the publication of the detailed contents of the letter constituted an invasion of privacy. And it's Despite all of the above articles, the defendant still retains a copy of the letter, which basically means they are complaining that the Mail of Sunday has a copy of the letter still. So the defence's summary uh, is that the Freedom of Expression Act enables them to release this detailed letter from Megan to her father. The Mail on Sunday admit that the information in the letter was personal, but denies that their processing of the letter was unlawful and unfair, and that the freedom of expression rights are relied on. Basically, in layman terms, as I've said before, the public interest outweighs everything else. And that the Mail on Sunday disputes the copyright claim on the grounds that the letter was not an original literary work. And if it was, they deny that they did not reproduce a substantial part, or if it did, the claimant's rights are outweighed by the other rights and interest. Part of the dishonesty and malice application was also thrown out because it was a an irrelevant rebuttal. Feelings don't really matter when it comes to court. Facts matter, and they didn't really admit or submit any real favourable articles or evidence to support this dishonesty and malice claim. The claim that the Mail on Sunday were stirring up and trying to dig up issues was also thrown out because there was no substantial evidence. The issue of the Mail on Sunday having a deliberate agenda against Meghan was also struck out because the lack of evidence, although that nine examples of articles were presented as evidence and they were deemed wholly inadequate and much more detail would be required to enable the pleaded claim to be fully understood and dealt with. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's completely shelved. It means that that particular part is still open if they present more evidence further on during the court case. This, interestingly, isn't a libel case. It is an infringement of copyright case and privacy and personal data. So those articles really shouldn't have been there in the first place. That is a whole different case altogether. And if she wishes to pick up on that, she needs to take the mail on Sunday or associated newspapers to court over liable accusations. So it seems that the first hurdle has been won by the Mail on Sunday or Associated Newspapers and they will ask the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to pay their court costs in excess of around about £50,000 after the couple refused their offer to deal because the Mail approached Meghan and Harry and said we'll settle out of court but of course they said they wanted to take it to pre-trial. So because because they have kind of stumbled at the first hurdle, it's up to Me- Meghan and Harry to pay both their court fees and the Mail on Sunday's court fees. Meghan's costs are said to be around about £60,000. So that's £110,000 for this whole palaver and it's not even gone to court yet. The Daily Mail asked the Matrix of Chambers, Gavin Miller QC, and he said the case presented to the court was overblown. It's a simple claim about a letter and five articles and cannot be turned into a mini public inquiry into associations reporting about them. The judge is right to push back against them. The court doesn't allow public figures to do that. It would have a chilling effect of freedom of speech. He continues that clients want their day in court and to get things off their chest. The lawyers are the mouthpieces of the clients and they can advise but are obligated to put their client's case as best they can. This is true here as in any case. I would imagine that Megan's lawyers have been advising her to tone it down a little bit where she's probably just gung-hoing and trying to throw everything at Associated Newspapers and the, the Mail on Sunday until something sticks. And this is exactly what it seems... 
reading the court documentations, it just seems all over the place. She's just trying to hurl anything she can to try and see if it will make any damage at all. So the trial probably won't go ahead until very late this year, early next year. Thomas Markle will probably be called to the stand, as will probably the five friends that went to people as well. There are whispers that a settlement might be on the cards because Megan has kind of taken the hit here, hasn't she? She knows she hasn't got a massively strong case and she's seen what the Associated Newspapers and Mail on Sunday have really to offer. So she can either go ahead with the trial and air all her dirty laundry and make at the trial of the century or lick her wounds and take a settlement which would you prefer do you want it to go to court or do you want it all to go away and for them just to be quiet just shush a little bit i know which one i'm going to be rooting for personally in a macabre kind of way i want this to go to court i want to see how it unfolds and i think it would be a little bit of an anticlimax if it doesn't i have heard that one of the five is a little bit hesitant to take the stand or not to take the stand because she doesn't want to be cut out of the circle of friends that she finds herself in, which is Megan's inner circle. She doesn't want to hurt her reputation as well or face charges by lying in a deposition or on the stand. Megan is saying that she didn't know that these five friends were going to do an interview with people. Do you really believe that? I don't at all. This is a woman that her friends will not do interviews unless they get her go-ahead completely. Megan is a complete control freak. Unless she gives you the go-ahead, you don't talk to the papers. So everybody knows that she knew that they were going to go and talk to people, yet she's denying that she knew. If those five friends take the stand and say that she didn't know, is that the right thing to save their friendship? It's a tricky one, isn't it? I would love to know your thoughts on this whole pre-trial finalized details. Tell me exactly how you think and how you also think this is going to proceed. They're going to settle or they're going to go to court. I would love to know your thoughts as always. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me. It really is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for watching once again.